everything's done. Sanded it out, put seam sealer on everything, made a plate for that hole. I uh, got new rubber grommets for the floor pans, so I took the old ones out and going to put new ones in so that way you know I can sand it around them so I could paint there but yeah that cleaned up really really quick and easy what's left there you see is kind of it looks like a it's a primer it's kind of a red oxide primer and it almost looks like maybe the body color overspray on it maybe or I don't know anyway and you can still see there's you know tar and stuff from when they were sealing it up and we'll just paint over that with the rust-oleum i'm using rust-oleum because i've used uh pour 15 in the past and it doesn't work any better than rust-oleum and rust-oleum is a fraction of the cost in fact i've had better results with rust-oleum i find that it's more durable and lasts longer but there we go we've got a uh floor pan tomorrow we'll slap some paint on that there we go it is all painted that is a satin black so it's still wet it'll once it dries it'll dull down but i might uh paint this area too once i, I got to take the seat belts out and i got i'm gonna have the back seat out again to put the side panels on and uh i'm going to oil and undercoat inside the quarter panels before the side panels go on but i wanted to get this paint on so it could start drying so I can get the steering column back in and then I'll oil and undercoat the inner panels maybe I'll pull this back out in the seat belts and paint that and then I'll put the carpet in well just plug away at it it's not like you know I need this car tomorrow to go cruising in so I'm just gonna uh think yeah I think I'm definitely gonna paint the floor pan there I wished I'd Sand it, you know, taking it apart and sanding the rust away, but oh well, that's no big deal. It's, you know, I can get to that anytime. But that looks really good. I'm really happy. These, these panels here are stainless steel, and that's actually the factory green. I masked when I painted the jams right on that joint. So this is, this is repaint. That's factory paint. And, uh, yeah, it looks looking, coming along good. I took out the headlight dimmer so I could paint all down in there, too. And that, what I didn't paint around where the steering column goes in, that's like a separate piece welded in there. And I just thought that would be a nice brake line to paint it on. And I painted up the sides a little bit, both sides, just, just because, because I can and I wanted to. But anyway, there we go. The floor pan is painted. Super happy with how it came out. I made that metal thing there. I got new grommets, as I said, I think. And uh, I have more grommets so I can replace them, too. I pulled the back seat out. I think I'm going to pull the seat belts out and paint from maybe here. I don't know, somewhere in here, maybe to this joint. Just, uh, I'll sand that lightly. This is pretty much all dry. And, uh, I'm going to solder the wires on the speaker right now, and I'll show you how I'm going to do that. I'm going to get the wires all on there. Po the red is to the positive lead. Get my soldering gun good and hot. And just give the tip a little tin. That helps transfer the heat. And I'm going to put it on there, and then I'm going to feed the solder into the wire and connector so it sucks it in when it's hot. I don't want to... Sorry, my hand's in the way there, isn't it? There it goes. So it looks like we could use a little more solder down there. There we go. Wires are soldered on. Now I can put the speaker back in and then I won't have to worry about taking it out again. The wiring for the speaker, I just got it kind of tucked right there and just kind of hanging 
down here until I can get a connector on there and get it hooked up properly. But yeah, I put a connector there and on the on this right here coming out right there. So that way, you know, it'll make it easier to take the plug in and out. And the positive on the car will be this one. This is the positive on the speaker. So that way, if it's unplugged, it doesn't short out. And I found some online assembly wiring diagrams. And the wiring comes up right through there for the speaker where the power for the top motor and whatnot. And see the wires for the top motor right there. Anyway, I just ran it through that clip and just kind of hung it there off by the pump now and that'll plug into the speaker connector. It'll make it easier, a little extra lead to plug in, you know, holding on to the seat out here and then once it's plugged in I can put the seat in. But I think I'm going to, like I say, I'm going to start on these side panels get them done so I can put them in once I install a carpet which I will install after I put the steering column in and I hope to do that tomorrow put the steering column in tomorrow so maybe Monday I can uh, get the carpet in and start you know putting things together and then I got a driver's seat to, to recover but this is this is really super clean, this floor pan in this car. Yeah, it's just unheard of to find them this clean. And you can see that. I think I showed that, but I'll run that wiring under the dash once I can get under there. And i got to put the connectors on there for the radio on. This is another day again, so I'm going to start uh, working on putting the steering column and I'll show you what i got to do to do that. Before I get too far into this video, I'm just going to show you a little something that I picked up. I saw it on 805 Road King's channel, so thank you. He bought a plasma cutter and some goodies to go with it that I thought, yeah, that looks pretty slick. So he had bought these for a chair he was making, and I thought, how slick. Now these come in different sizes. These are .380, depending on how big your nozzle is, so if you cut a three-inch hole and run it around there and your your plasma cutter is thicker than nozzles thicker than that you'll have a smaller than three inch hole i actually went and got my calipers and measured my uh nozzle on mine and it was it was like i think it was like 0.37 it, it was within you know a thousandths or so so anyway i ordered these I actually got these for my birthday. This was another one of my birthday. Uh, so it comes with quite a quite a selection for the round holes and I'll definitely use these. I'm going to keep them in with the plasma cutter. And then these are for square and you know you can cut. Like it could cut straight lines. You could make a big elongated hole because of the marks on there to where you could just go like so and then go on with your straight depending on what size you want. Same with the uh, square hole. And these are for elongated holes. So, you know, if I make something, I want to mount an engine, a little Briggs and Stratton to or something and need elongated holes, tension chains or belts or whatever, you know, I can do that too. So there, they turned out to be a, watching his video turned out to be an expense, but uh, something that I'm going to thoroughly enjoy. So this is uh, kind of, where their website or whatever they're you know where you can get these things if you're interested and they have other doodads too you know they're always send you this stuff to try and sell you more and uh anyway yeah there we go it's uh it's pretty slick what these things are so anyway i'm gonna get now i'm gonna get to showing you what i'm gonna do on the car yeah, as long as we're rambling about junk, I'm just going to continue on just for another minute or so. So I got all these clips to do the the uh, those side panels to glue the the vinyl around the edges, and I got I got these, and I think that these are just too big, and they're not going to have the the capability of holding like the smaller ones. So I ordered a ton of smaller ones. And I even have smaller ones in the house that I've had around for a while, but I 
ordered two boxes of these and a bag of these. So I think we have enough to hold things in place to do those interior panels. And just before I get into what I'm doing here, I just wanted to show these. These were from the these are from the 80s. These were um oil change stickers you'd put in the door jam. And I got these when I worked for Jerome Duncan Ford. That used to be one of the largest Ford dealers in the nation back in that era. And uh yeah, so I got a roll of these for when I had to, had to do oil changes and stuff. And I still have them. Isn't that crazy after all these years? And they're still good. I still can I still occasionally use them. What does it say on the... It says inspected and passed by Kathy Burridge, September 1984. Okay, so that Grand Rapids label. So that, that gives you a idea how old these are. It says Grand Rapids Label Company, 2351 Oak. It looks like Oak and, I don't know, it almost doesn't look like an O. Yeah, it is Oak Industrial Drive, Northeast Grand Rapids, Michigan, 49505. Just in case if anyone's interested. Now on to the task at hand here. So I might set the camera up so I can use both hands here, but I'm going to, I got to ream out this hole. The chrome plating had, you know, thickened up, made this lever thicker all the way around. So I got to still make sure it fits in the steering column collar here. And I got the pin. This is the original pin that came out of the car. And that does not fit through there. And this should fit loosely on that so the lever moves on the pin. You don't want this, this pin tight on your lever and loosen that aluminum collar. Because every time you move the lever, it'll twist that pin and hog out that aluminum collar. So this has to be rigid in the aluminum collar in order to keep it from going to heck again. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little keyhole file, a rat tail one, and clean that hole out enough to where... The pin fits in there. And I did get a new pin, and it is a little longer. So what I'm going to do, after I push it in, I'm going to push the top through until it's flush, and I'm just going to cut the bottom off the little cutoff wheel with my Dremel. And I measured, let me uh, show you, i got to set my camera down here for a second. So I measured these two pins in several places. And... Uh, so that's kind of where this pin's measuring there, where it measures there, and where it measures there. So the bottom, it's almost like tapered. The top, that end of the pin has very little wear compared to that end of the pin. You can see it as I slide it back and forth in there. And then I got this new pin, and this pin is pretty consistent all the way across and you can see the size of it. I'm just going to go midway on the pin so you can see the size of it right there. Does that show up? And then I'll measure the original pin. So it's a little bit bigger but that's probably because this one's been you know crushed and this one hasn't. And I'm going to make sure this doesn't bugger the steering column when I go to install it, but the hole on the shift lever, let me see if I can do this. Now this isn't really the proper tool for this, but you can see how much smaller that hole is now from the chrome plating. So I definitely got to hog that hole out in order to um, you know, get that pin to fit through there freely. So that's what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to file that out until it's just slightly larger than this pin. I don't want it to fit loose because this is going to crush down a little bit once it's in that aluminum. You know, it'll be, it'll smush, see how there's a split in it? It'll smush that down a little bit and make the pin a little smaller here. And I don't want this lever loose 
on the pin. So I'm going to make it a snug fit, but so I can turn it in there. And like I say, I'm just going to use a little, I'll show you the file I'm going to use. This is the file set, and I'm going to use this little, little uh, rat tail right here. And it's not a very big file, as you can see. So hopefully we can get it through and file out that hole. You know, I'm just going to have to go in there and just very carefully do it so I don't bugger anything up. It's going to be time consuming. And, uh, you know, that's just what happens when you replate things. It adds thickness to it and then you got to file it out. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to work on getting this gear shift lever back on the steering column and get the steering column back in the car. I got it together and it's all nice and tight now. So I took this roll pin, this old one that had been compressed before, and I filed the hole out on the lever until this fit really super snug, just barely. Uh, you know, I didn't want to make this hole too big on the lever to a point where it'd be sloppy again. So I know that this pin was bigger around, but they're going to compress when they go into that collar. So I didn't want to hog it out to where that new pin fit right through because it would be too loose. So I took this old one that had been hammered in a while and made it so it fit really tight. And uh, then I just uh, drove this one through with a block of wood and a punch and a little hammer and tapped it through. I got to cut the excess off there. Just used a piece of hockey stick here to, to hold it while I tapped it in. But, um, and I oiled everything really good so that uh, it's all lubricated. Let me, um, hang on a second, let me uh, show you what I'm going to, uh, let me just set the camera. Now you can kind of see, and uh, that lever is nice and tight in there. It moves without moving this. I'm going to touch that up after I cut this off because I'm going to touch that up too. But I'm going to let it protrude that just the fuzz that it's protruding on both ends just so you know it, it just to give it some meat because the tip of these is beveled and I, I want that that so all the meat biting is in this aluminum collar I don't want to have to replace this or have this wear out again and uh, that is really nice that's park reverse neutral drive and low so it all works as it should so we'll get this all and the pointer is right on the money when it's in drive there the pointer is right on the green mark so I'll adjust the transmission linkage so when that's in drive the transmissions latched in drive too so that you know that way the pointer will be lined up from there on but let me, uh, I'm going to just take my little Dremel with a little cutoff wheel and I'm going to whack that puppy off and touch those up and the steering column will be ready to install. Touched up the paint. So this thing is ready to, ready to go in. Look at that, nice and tight. Super happy with how it uh, tightened up. I'm going to put a little oil in that um, after I install it. But um, I think it's pretty much all ready to go in the car. So I'm going to gather up the rest of the stuff. And, uh, you know, if you're curious, you know, about chrome plating, it does build up. You know, they, they put uh, copper on it and they put nickel on it and then they chrome it. And depending on how pitted up it is, how many layers of copper and whatnot they have to do. But that, uh, you know, if you if you want to know how to do chrome plating, Sam, um, I think he had his Edsel mirror for a demo at a chrome plating place. You know, had this part of the mirror re replated on his 59 Edsel. Um, so check out Delashment Road. I'll put a link in the description to that video. He had a pretty good video of how chrome plating is done. I've been through Kohler, the facility up in Wisconsin. Um, they have our artisan residence program there and I've seen I know a couple people who went through it and been there and 
seen how they chrome and, you know, gold plate or brass plate or whatever. And that facility, they make everything, too. They make bathtubs, toilets. They make them for prison cells. They they make, uh, their engines are made there. They, there was uh, gen sets that they were making there. And, they're, you know, raw cast iron castings for Kohler engines. This was probably, you know, 15, 20 years ago when I went through the facility. But, um... Yeah, it's a pretty interesting how they chrome plate. So check out uh, Sam's video. Again, link in description if I remember to that video. And you can see how uh, chrome plating is done. I think you'll find it interesting. Just getting everything here ready to reinstall uh, the seal that was on this. I glued back in, I'll show you. I used some contact cement on it just to kind of hold it in place until I get the column in. And I, there's a bolt with a little bracket here that goes on here to hold the speedometer cable in place. And that needs to be, you know, off so you can move the speedometer cable out of the way to get in there to, you know, get all that stuff in there. So anyway, I'm going to let that dry a couple minutes. And then I'm going to stuff the steering column in. I already put these in to hang it from. And uh, I'll just get it into the gear and get it started here. And then I can put all the other stuff in. Steering column is in. It was a bit of work, but it's in. You can see the I hooked everything. Uh, not enough light. Let me get a light. There we go. You can see where everything's hooked up there. Hook to the steering gear. And uh, the the horn ring, I'll show you the little plastic tab broken. I can't find, I have another one, but you think I can find it? Anyway, there we go. The I got one little piece that's got to go up, whoops, I can, my camera's silly, that's got to go up in here padding, and the little nail or clip, the things that hold it in are broken, so I'll have to, I got to order some stuff tomorrow and I'll order them. But that is all in, basically ready for the carpet. But I think I'm going to let this paint dry another day or two. And then um, put the carpet in. In the meantime, I'm going to work on some of these side panels for back there. This is the lat little... See how there are little tabs there? That one's broken off. The spring goes on there and just pushes on and turns. I'll show you when I put it on, but um, I got to replace this. And like I say, somewhere around here, I have a new one. I just don't feel up, up to hunting for it right now. It's getting late and I want to edit up a video. But anyway, let me, uh, I'll show you how everything goes on it. I hook the, the battery up here. Just put the, post on. I like to disconnect the battery when I'm working on wiring. Yeah, you can see the interior light came on and uh, get the key here and I'm just going to put it in accessory for now so you can see when I put the lever in reverse the reverse lights do come on. I don't have the turn signal lever back from the chrome plater yet but that's okay. And then uh, when it's in park, when it's in neutral, when it's in drive, so that all, so that all works. And uh, I'm not going to start the engine because then I'd have to let it warm up for a while. But that, you know, that gives you everything set up and working as it should. And tomorrow I'll put the horn ring on. I'll, I think that clip thing I have is somewhere in the basement in my parts stash. And uh, I'll get it and we'll get that on first thing tomorrow. But there we go. I'm going to run the top back up. I've been putting the top down while I work on it. Now there is no latch mechanism on the window frame because that's still out being chrome plated, but there we go. And uh, 
Another thing too, the indicator on the, the uh, shift thing illuminates like it should. So there we go, it looks really nice. And I put that plastic bezel on that has that chrome plated doohickey. I should have showed that before I put the top up, but you probably see it in, in back further in the video before I did put the top up. But that is steering columns all in, everything set up, working, ready to ready to finish the interior up and do some cruising. I don't know how this video this is my iPhone. It videos in the dark better than than my uh GoPro. So I just thought I'd do some, the levers are over here, that's why that, that looks dimmer, the knobs kind of block it. But there we go, the clock is running, keeping time. Everything works good as it should. So there we go, I'll illuminate it in the dark. So I'm going to call it a day and definitely wrap this video up so I can go in and edit it up. And uh, appreciate you watching my video. If you like the video, definitely hit the like button. It certainly helps. Share it. If you want to subscribe to my channel, hit that 348 engine icon there. And thank you for watching my videos.